name's Chase Dan McCauley and you're watching AccessTV.org. to tell some Uncle Remus stories. And um, as told by um, Julius Lester, and it was illustrated by Jerry um, Pinckney. And I want you to remember the story that I told you maybe a year or two ago, maybe one or two of you could remember the story I told you about Br'er Rabbit and the other animals who were up, who had not come to earth yet, and since Sister Moon was looking so peaked, uh, Br'er Rabbit decided to jump down to earth and, and give Mr. Man a message for Sister Moon. But since Mr. Man was so rude and he didn't care anything about what Sister, uh, about Sister Moon, so Br'er Rabbit jumped back up, take a, a, a big leap and jump back up to the moon and told Sister Moon what Mr. Man said, and Sister Moon got so indignant that she socked Br'er Rabbit. You know, Br'er Rabbit don't take no stuff, and that's what it said. Br'er Rabbit don't take no stuff, and he scratched Sister Moon. And to this day, you see those scratches in the moon when you look up. Well... All the animals decided they didn't want to stay there with Sister Moon. Let her, she is on her own. So they took a leaping jump to Earth. Anybody remember that story? Well, maybe some of you did. And, that, and that's good. So we're going to start uh, our story where the animals are now on Earth and their, and their adventures. But... Before we start that, I'm going to just explain something about uh, Uncle Remus' stories. Br'er Rabbit is a symbol of how black people responded to slavery. Unable to resist physically, black resistance to slavery found subl sublimated expression through the figure of the Willie Rabbit, who outsmarted those seeking to oppress him. This is the interpretation, uh, inter my pronunciation, but you, I hope you know what I mean, offered by Joel Chandler Harris, who wrote that the Negro select as his hero, the weakest and most harmless of all animals, and brings him out victorious. This view was this view was given by folklorist well into the present century. Now, Br'er Rabbit tales were transplanted from Africa and are merely variants of the tales about Anansi the Spider, still current in West Africa. The tales are important because they chronicle the survival techniques used in slavery. I didn't, use, I, I didn't like Br'er Rabbit stories when I was coming up, not too much, but I liked Uncle Remus, this old man. Walt Disney's old, older gentleman with a very pleasant face, and he was telling a story to this little white boy. But I didn't pay attention to the little white boy because as far as I was concerned, he was telling stories to me. And I just loved, I loved the song um, Zippity Doo Dat. 
Zippity doo da, zippity a. My oh my, what a wonderful day. You remember that? Oh, I loved that. I loved that. And I and I and I sing it to children even today. Well, our first story. It's going to be Br'er Rabbit eats the butter. The more time the animals spent with each other, the more they liked it. They got to liking each other so much that Br'er Rabbit, Br'er Fox, and Br'er Possum decided to live together. Don't know what their wives and their children thought about it. They probably didn't mind since Br'er Rabbit, Br'er Fox, and Br'er Possum were never at home anyway. Everything was going along fine until the roof sprung a leak. The first sunny day, Br'er Rabbit, Br'er Fox, and Br'er Possum got out the ladder, the hammer and the nails, and climbed up on the roof. They took their lunch with them so they wouldn't have to waste time climbing down to eat at lunchtime. But they realized that the butter would melt in the sun, so they went and put it in, a, in the well to keep it nice and cool. They hadn't been working long before Br'er Rabbit began thinking about that butter. His stomach started growling like a cat getting ready to fight. He was hammering and nailing when all of a sudden he jumped up and yelled, Here I am! What you want with me? Off he went like somebody was calling him. Br'er Fox and Br'er Parton watched him go off through the woods and wondered what was wrong. Br'er Rabbit hid behind a tree, and when he saw them go back to working, he sneaked over to the well, whacked off a pat of butter, and ate it. Then he went on back. Where you been, Br'er Fox? Wanted to know. Oh, I heard my children calling out, and I had to go see uh, see about them. My wife done took sick. Half hour passed. The memory of that butter began to work on Br'er Rabbit's mind, not to mention his stomach. He raised his head. His ears shot up real straight, and he hollered, Hold on, I'm coming. Down the ladder he went. This time he stayed away a little longer. And when he came back, Brad Fox asked, how's your wife? Mighty low, mighty low. Brad Rabbit didn't work more than 15 minutes when he went off again. He didn't leave the well this time until the butter was all gone. When he got back to the roof, he was feeling mighty good. How's your wife? Br'er Possum asked. She's dead, answered Br'er Rabbit with a sorrowful look. Br'er Possum and Br'er Fox felt mighty bad. They decided to stop work, eat lunch, and try to make Br'er Rabbit feel better. Br'er Fox laid out the food and sent Br'er Possum to the well to get the butter. In a few minutes, Br'er Possum came back all out of breath. Hey, y'all, um, the butter come quick. B better come quick. All the butter's gone. Gone where, said Br'er Fox. Just done dried up. Br'er Rabbit grunted. Dried up in somebody's mouth, I bet. They went to the well, and sure enough, no butter. Br'er Rabbit starts looking at the ground real close. 
like he's Sherlock Holmes or somebody. I see tracks. If the two of you go to sleep, I can find out who ate the butter. Mm-hmm. You see, they looking in the well now, trying to find that butter. Brer Possum and Brer Fox went to sleep. Brer Rabbit took the butter left on his paws and smeared it on Brer Possum's mouth. Then he went back to the roof, ate the lunch, come back and woke Brer Fox. There's the butter, he said, pointing to Possum's mouth. He was the one you sent for the butter, wasn't he? He was the first one down here. Could, couldn't be nobody else but him. They woke Brer Possum and Brer Fox accused him of eating up the butter. Naturally, Brer Possum denied everything, but Brer Fox pointed to the evidence around Brer Possum's mouth. Brer Possum keep pleading his innocence. Finally, he had an idea. I know how we can catch the one. What really did it, build a fire, and everybody try to jump over it. The one that falls in, the one what stole the butter. They built the fire high, and they built the fire wide. And when it was going good, the test began. Brer Rabbit was first, and quite naturally, he leaped over the fire so high, he didn't even feel the heat. Next came Brer Fox. He got a good running start and managed to make it over. But it was so close that his tail caught a fire. That's why to this day, the underside of the fox's tail is white. Last to go was Brer Possum. He got a good running start, jumped, and whap, landed right in the middle of the fire. That was the end of Brer Possum. I know it don't seem right since Brer Possum didn't have a thing to do with it, the disappearance of the butter, but that's the way of the world. Lots of people suffer for other folks. Yep, suffer for other folks' sins. And I could tell you a thing or two about that if I had a mind to. Mm-hmm. We got to go to, we have to go to commercial now, but I hope you enjoyed that story. And we'll have another one for you as soon as I get back. Don't miss November 5th, 2016. Come have fun and games with other teens. West Indian Club is the place to be. Come join in, there's plenty to see. Check out the scouts and explorers too. You can learn a lot and experience something new. 10 to 2 is the time to come. Plenty of prizes to be won. Want to learn about STEM? Get on the bus, stay a while, and have free lunch with us. Salute your veterans and follow the right route. See you there. A day not to miss out. Hartford Public Schools. We care about one thing above all, the future of our kids. That's why we're dedicated to providing all students with the knowledge and skills needed in the new global culture. Hartford Public Schools is thriving. More student success stories, more world-class facilities, more university and corporate partnerships, more amazing talent coming and staying in Hartford. This is how education is supposed to work. Welcome to Hartford Public Schools, where the future is present.
are back with Br'er Rabbit and, and the gang with Uncle Remus's stories. Our next story is Br'er Rabbit saves his meat. One day, Br'er Fox or Bear Wolf was going home after fishing all day. What's that you say? You say I told you that Br'er Rabbit killed Br'er Wolf? by pouring hot water on him? Well now, that's true, ain't it? But you got to understand, back before once upon a time, drying, dying was different. Just because you died in one story didn't mean you stayed dead for the rest of the stories. That wouldn't be no fun, would it? Of course not. Now, like I was saying, Br'er Wolf was sauntering home with his string of fish when all of a sudden, Miss Partridge came flying out of her bushes at him. He ducked and dodged, wondering what in the dickens was going on. It finally occurred to him that Miss Partridge must have her nest nearby. Well, Br'er Wolf had a lot of fish, but the thought of some nice young Partridge was more than he could resist. He dropped his string of fish right there in the road and went to hunting for the nest. A few minutes passed. And along come Br'er Rabbit. He stopped when he saw the string of fish lying in the road. He looked at them. The fish looked at him. And that settled that. When Br'er Wolf came back empty-handed, he didn't see nothing in the road but a big wet spot. He looked up the road. No fish. He looked down the road. No fish. Nowhere. He sat down and thought the situation over. There was only one explanation. Of course, Br'er Rabbit. He went straight there. Br'er Rabbit was sitting on the porch. You stole my fish! Red Fox said, without so much as a howdy-do. What fish? You know what fish. Red Rabbit said, Red Wolf shouldn't be going around accusing people of crimes they didn't commit. And Red Wolf said other folks shouldn't be taking what wasn't theirs. And they went back and forth and forth and back like that until Br'er Rabbit said, If you believe I got your fish, then you can go out back and kill the best cow I got. Br'er Rabbit thought that would put an end to the matter. Nobody would offer his best cow if he was lying. But Br'er Wolf knew Br'er Rabbit pretty well. He marched right on back to the pasture, took a close look at all the cows, and being a gentleman of good judgment and discriminating taste, killed the best cow of the lot. Br'er Rabbit couldn't believe his eyes. What was the world coming to when somebody wouldn't believe one of his lies? But that didn't mean Br'er Rabbit was whooped. Mm -mm. Br'er Wolf, Br'er Wolf, the police is coming. The police is coming. You better run and hide. Br'er Wolf dropped the cow and took off through the underbrush. He was 
always up to so much no good that it didn't surprise him that the police might be after him. Brer Wolf wasn't hid good before Brer Rabbit was skinning the cow, cutting it up into pieces and salting it. He called his children and they ran and hid the meat in the smokehouse. When he had finished, Brer Rabbit took, t- took the cow's tail and stuck it in the ground. Brer Wolf, hey, Brer Wolf, come quick. Your cow is going into the ground. Brer Wolf came ca- cautiously out of the underbrush and saw Brer Rabbit holding onto the cow's tail like he was trying to keep it from going into the ground. Brer Wolf grabbed the tail. They pulled and popped. The tail came out of the ground. Brer Rabbit took his head sadly. You pulled the tail out of the cow, and the cow done gone now. Brer Wolf didn't want to hear nothing like that. He got him a shovel and started digging. Brer Rabbit chuckled and went and sat on the porch. Brer Fox was shoveling and digging out as fast as you'd thought he'd turn into a steam shovel. Brer Rabbit just chuckled. <laughs> and every now and then, he sang under his breath, he diggy, 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 but no meat there. He diggy, ha ha, diggy, 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 but no meat there. Ha ha ha. And that, and he dug and he dug. And do you think he found the cow? Do you think he found the meat? What is Brer Rabbit done now? Well, we're going to go to commercial now. And guess what? We got another story for you about Brer Rabbit and his carrying on. We'll be right back. Don't miss November 5th, 2016. Come have fun and games with other teens. West Indian Club is the place to be. Come join in, there's plenty to see. Check out the scouts and explorers too. You can learn a lot and experience something new. 10 to 2 is the time to come. Plenty of prizes to be won. Want to learn about STEM? Get on the bus, stay a while, and have free lunch with us. Salute your veterans and follow the right route. See you there. A day not to miss out.
How do you judge a law firm's success? Cases won, money made, or what the firm does in the community? At Dressler Strickland, we know that success is just the beginning. The true measure of success is what you do with it. For 33 years, we've used our success to help our neighbors and our community. 24 7, 1122. Whenever you need us, we'll be there. Dressler Strickland, building communities one case at a time. We're back with Tales of Uncle Remus. Rare Rabbit's Children. Now you're getting to know, if you know a Nancy, you know Br'er Rabbit, right? So we're getting to know just how Br'er Rabbit is. And you know, these are old, old stories that our forefathers told. And so it's, it's nice to get to know them. Br'er Rabbit's children, even if Br'er Rabbit and Br'er Fox had become friends, it didn't mean that Br'er Fox had stopped being a fox. When he dropped by to see Br'er Rabbit one afternoon and saw the little rabbits all by themselves, well, he couldn't help it. That he, he couldn't help it that he was a fox. They looked so fat and tender and juicy. He wanted to gobble them up right then and there, but didn't know how he could without having a big excuse. <coughs> he still remembered how Br'er Rabbit had poured scalding water over his cousin, Br'er Wolf. The little rabbits were huddled in a corner. As scared as they could be, Br'er Fox sat down in a rocking chair and started rocking back and forth. He saw a stalk of sugar. Mmm. A stalk of sugar cane standing by the door. Break me off a piece of that cane. Ain't too many things in the world tougher than sugar cane. Br'er Fox knew they couldn't break it, and when they failed, he'd have an excuse to eat them. The little rabbits sweated, and they wrestled, and they strained, and they puffed, but nothing doing. You rabbits, hurry up. If you don't break me off some of uh, that cane, I'll eat you. The little rabbits tried even harder, but they couldn't break it. Then they heard a little bird singing on top of the house. Take your teeth and gnaw it. Take your teeth and gnaw it. Saw it, yoke it, and then you can break it. The little rabbit started into gnawing and biting, and quicker than butter could melt on a hot stove, they had a piece of cane broken off. Brad Fox wasn't too happy about that. He got up and commenced pacing the floor. Hmm. He saw a sifter hanging from the wall. Here. Take this sifter and run down to the creek and get me some fresh water. The little rabbits ran down there and tried to dip the sifter. Naturally, the water just came running out. They didn't know what to do and sat down and cried. Then, from up in a tree, the little bird started singing. Sister holds water, same as a tray, if you fill it with moss and dab it with clay. The fox gets madder the longer you stay. Fill it with moss and dab it in the clay. 
the little rabbits put moss and clay in the sifter, filled it with water, and carried the water to Br'er Fox. He was fighting mad now. He pointed to a big log that was sitting beside the fireplace. Put that log on the fire, he ordered. The little rabbits tried to lift it. It couldn't budge. They tried to turn it on end. It wouldn't budge. They tried to roll it. It wouldn't budge. Then they heard the little bird singing. Split, spit in your hand and tug it and toe and toil it. Get it behind, get behind it and push it and pull it. Spit in your hand and rear back and roll it. They set to work and just about time they got the log on the fire. Br'er Rabbit and his wife came walking in. Br'er Fox grinned real sheepish like. Well, Br'er Rabbit thought you wasn't going to get back before I left. Br'er Rabbit only needed to glance at his children to see that something was wrong. But he pretended like he didn't notice a thing. They don't, why don't you stay and have dinner, Br'er Fox, since Br'er Wolf stopped coming to see me? I ain't had much company. Gets mighty lonesome sometime. Br'er Fox allowed as to how Miss Fox was expecting him home for supper. Mm, well, you know, he said, my wife is ex- really expecting me home for supper. And I, I got to, I got to go right now. And any tipped on his way out, just tiptoed on his way out. Mm, mm, mm. Cause he knew just what I know and just what you probably know. Br'er Rabbit was gonna get him for messing with his children. Now these stories seem a little familiar on how these how these animals act. And do we know any people like these? Do we know any people like Br'er Rabbit? Always trying to get something for nothing? And be in conquering? Yes, yes, we know them. And those slaves back there, they were pretty smart. They knew just how to act to get what they wanted. Many times. Many, many times. And if you read these stories and have a little knowledge of our history, boy, they really come alive. Br'er Rabbit, you can see who Br'er Rabbit is. And the stories, you can see, you can even see who Uncle Remus is. That person who's telling us stories, giving us little messages of what to do, just like these little, the, the little bird told the little, the, the little rabbits how to do something. It came to them. Kind of like, oh, well, kind of like God kind of gives us little messages to tell us how to survive, huh? I really like that story. I really like the, the one with the bird because that just gives me some Wow, we always had a way to survive. And these stories are even surviving today. And that's wonderful. So I hope that you read some of these stories. Um, The complete, these are the complete tales of Uncle Remus. And 
there is there are other books with the same stories in them um, as told by um, Julius Lester. And I do have also uh, Uncle Remus complete tales of Uncle Remus and they are in dialect. I have never been able to tell the story in dialect or it would take me a lot of studying to do that. I wish I could do that, but I, I can't do that. And it takes work. So if I really want to do it, I'll have to work at that. But you can get these books, um, The Complete Tales of Uncle Remus. And you could get this. I brought with me um, more tales of Uncle Remus, a, a, a smaller version, not as many stories, but the, the same stories and by um, Julius Lecture and Lester, and he does modify, modernize them a little bit, and they are wonderful stories that we should never forget. And so that's my, that's my Miss Cleo storytelling corner today. And I hope you really enjoyed the Uncle Remus stories. And I will see you next week. And remember, read a little, write a little, dream big, and I'll be with you next week.